the other kind of question that uh, UPSC is now having a little bit of interest towards is questions about general species. It's not about a specific species of a butterfly or a specific, you know, a category of, um, you know, a different kinds of birds, etc. It's in general about the general features of certain organisms. And if you look at those organisms, this specific question is rightly placed in the kind of interest that UPSC has shown. This question reads as which of the following organisms perform waggle dance for others of their kin? That means of the others in their same group, like how we say relatives kind of a thing, to indicate the direction and the distance to a source of their food. Okay, I want you to understand when you the quest, you read the question itself, you get a fair idea that we are talking about a species that is very social in nature. Okay, social in nature to the point where it is extensively studied. Now, this specific organism, what it tries to do is, once it gets the food from a specific source and it needs to communicate it quickly to the others of its group so that they all can go and get uh, whatever is the food that is there and most of the time it's honey, all of these things. So, what happens is, it performs a kind of eight shape dance. So, I'll tell you how it is. It's basically like it'll go in a circle, move over here, then it'll you know, it will move up and down, it will be zigzagging and again it will be doing this kind of an act and it does this in a vice versa position also. This is your waggle dance. Once this is performed, the other species which are over there in this category, they also try to understand that, okay, there is this specific, uh, you know, food at this place. If you look at the four organisms given over here, there is butterfly, dragonflies, honeybees and wasps. Of all the four given over here, the one category of uh, species that is extremely social in nature is your honey bees. Okay, be it the form of the beehives that they create, the kind of um, com social communication that they have, they are considered to be much more experts in these kind of communications. So, I'll tell you another fact also. In the case of any kind of a honey bee going to one source and it has collected the honey from there and it's not just it tries to communicate to another bee, a uh, group of bees, where that source is. At times, this specific bee regurgitates a part of the honey for the other bees to taste it so that they can also be like, oh, okay, fine. So, this is this good. Then I'll go and collect it. Understand? So, it's that kind of an evolved species. And the answer to this question is your honey bees. Okay? So, the answer to this is C. Moving forward, the next question is a very uh, general question. Consider the following statement. Some mushrooms have medicinal properties. Some mushrooms have psychoactive properties. Some mushrooms have insecticidal properties. Some mushrooms have bioluminescent properties. Which of the following statements are correct? Or only one statement, only two, only three, only four. First of all, when you look at medicinal mushrooms, we have a lot of mushrooms like your shiitake mushrooms, mitaki mushrooms, etc. that are considered to be medicinal. That statement is correct. Second statement, some mushrooms have psychoactive properties. Psychoactive in the sense that they are able to give some kind of a, you know, hallucinogenic or any kind of a, you know, a little bit of elevated experience kind of a thing. And here, when you look at these kind of mushrooms, you have certain category of mushrooms called as, the most common one called as your magic mushrooms, which have a certain chemical in it called as your silo. Cybin, which we know to have these psychoactive properties. So, the second statement is correct. When you look at the third statement, you know a lot of mushrooms when it is occurring on the ground. What happens is they give out certain toxins that have the ability to attack any kind of a pest that is surrounding the plant or maybe even any kind of a weed. So, if tomorrow if someone asks some mushrooms have weedicidal properties or that is also a correct statement. Some mushrooms have pesticidal properties that is also a correct statement. So, yes, that third one is also correct. 
some mushrooms have bioluminescent properties this request this statement was asked because in that particular year there were evidences of a lot of discoveries in the northeastern part of our country for bioluminescent mushrooms you don't have to know their species full name scientific name or anything but you do have to understand bioluminescent means emitting a certain kind of light when there is any kind of a stimulus Okay, so yes, some mushrooms have bioluminescent properties. The answer to this question is all four. Okay. Moving forward, the next question is about Indian squirrels. Okay, so uh, understand on the, this per, that particular year, this question was asked. This was a, uh, a doubtful question, as in like you know, there was institutes giving two, three different kinds of answers. L but now we do have the UPSC key for it. The question reads as: Consider the following statements regarding the Indian squirrels. They build nests by making burrows in the ground. They store their food materials like nuts and seeds in the ground. They are omnivorous. Okay. So, when this question was asked, one thing that everyone knew was that second statement. The second statement was they store their food materials like nuts and seeds in the ground. Because we've seen enough of our uh, cartoons and certain things to recollect this where the species or even if you generally observe a kind of a squirrel, they're always on the ground trying to find something and then, you know, it, it has that ability to maybe burrow things, put it under and this is also a very important thing when it comes to loosening up the soil also. So, yes, that second statement is correct. Now, coming to the other two statements. This is a very doubtful thing for a lot of people. Why? Because most of the times people do see squirrels eating your normal nuts and fruits and everything. But the fact remains that squirrels do have a very omnivorous nature. Sometimes they do consume your certain insects, etc. Smaller organisms, etc. Some species of squirrels. So, what happens over here? Third statement is correct. The first statement, they build nests by making burrows in the ground. You do not generally see this trait in Indian squirrels. Indian squirrels are primarily arboreal in nature. Okay, they do have their homes up your trees, etc. So that first statement is wrong. The answer to this question over here is the only two statements which are correct, which is only two. Okay, so the answer to this question is B. Now, what is my takeaway from this question? Again, to that earlier question, as I told you, when you learn a species, it's not just enough that you just, uh, you know, mug up its scientific name and go, which is the absolutely least important thing that is needed. When you learn a species, you should be able to maybe figure out what are its, as I told you earlier, what is its breeding nature, what is its eating nature. Even if you knew the eating nature of it, you would be able to solve it. So, just if you are looking through your species study and you have missed out on these gaps, this would be the right time to maybe find out when you're reading a thing and you're revising something. If you do not have where does that animal live, where what does it eat and what is its social status as in is it uh, very sociable, is it elusive, is it nocturnal, diurnal, what is the category that it belongs to. Find these extra information so that your information gap in that particular topic will be reduced. Now, as we move on to the next question, the question reads, some microorganisms can grow in environments with temperature above the boiling point of water. Some microorganisms can grow in environments with temperature below the freezing point of water. Some microorganisms can grow in highly acidic environment below 3. The question is about microorganisms. And when I'm saying microorganisms, I want you to understand they would have included bacteria in it, algae in it, fungi in it, and even certain categories of protists. Okay. If you look at these broad categories of things, you have so many species. Some of them have extremely, what you say, halophilic nature. They can grow, uh, they can exist in extremely salty conditions. Some of them can grow, uh, grow in extremely, what you say, uh, acidic kind of conditions, in cold conditions, etc. So, when you look at all of these statements, it is a very I would say this is more than an environment question. That is a probability question. Out of all of these microorganisms, don't you think there will be species 
that can be in any of these categories so yes how many of the above statements are correct all three of them are correct your answer for this is c now as we move on which one of the following animals makes a tool with a stick to scrape insects from a hole in a tree or a log of wood so you're basically looking at an organism which is primarily going to be living on a tree or associated with a tree why because they are making a tool with a stick and they are scraping insects from the holes that are there on the trees okay now just look at all of them fishing cat very small organism that is primarily seen on the grounds not much on the trees etc orangutan otter sloth bear otter was a previous not a previous year question but previously it was there in different current affair articles and one of the primary things otter was there in this because otter was a species primarily reliant on fish etc for its diet okay so this insect scraping insects from tree and all it does not fit otter's vibe <laughs> it is not the otter the sloth bear does have a chance to be there but let's keep it there then looking at the fishing cat also as i told you this is one of those organisms which is very low on the ground it does not uh, uh, figure out or it does not try to do this much of activity to get its prey coming to orangutan and sloth bear how do you choose from this this is where you get back to the question and you understand that they are describing a very intelligent process they it's not just uh, an animal trying to eat the insect this animal has made a tool with a stick and instead of just going and trying to grab it with its hand it's using the stick and scraping insects out of the tree and eating it understand it's it's the sign of a much more evolved category of organisms out of the ones left the more evolved category is your orangutan orangutan is one amongst the ape species in the world it does not occur orangutan does not occur in india india has only one major ape species which is your gibbon and that is your hulock gibbon okay so that's the additional information when you look at sloth bear sloth bear also is an animal that likes to eat ants and insects and everything but it does not do so much of activity sloth bear primarily tries to get it if it's on the ground if it tries it's on in its vicinity that's where it tries to get it it does not put so much of effort and so much of expertise and evolutionary traits at play when it's trying to find its food so the answer to this question is your b orangutan